Yeah. All right, good evening. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Keisha Farm Committee. It is a virtual meeting by, uh, I guess, the governor's order, maybe our last one. So hopefully we'll be in person next time. But for now, um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order and it is 5.04 and we have a quorum. Um, we have a quorum here tonight. Uh, I wanted to, before you start the minutes, just say to you, I'm sorry to have missed last meeting. I read the minutes carefully. I watched the committee meeting so I could get the kind of sense and flavor of it. And I really appreciate, um, Mary, what you did and Jenna, what you did too, to just keep things you know, moving forward. I, uh, I appreciate it. Um, we have, I have the minutes in front of me. I was not present. Are there any changes or corrections to the minutes that anybody would like to make? Okay, seeing or hearing none. Is there anyone who wants to make a motion to accept the minutes as, as submitted? So moved. All right, that's Jim and a second. <laughs> Pam, thank you, a second from Pam. All right, and then um, I will abstain and then all those in favor, just raise your hand, signify yes. Aye. All right, great, thank you. Um, this is a question for you, Bonnie. Do you wanna start with the barn? because that is a big issue for us tonight. Okay, so a little background, Bonnie and I were talking and I said, how about Mary Dunn? And she said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna email her again. And we got all the information that we need. So Bonnie, if you wanna explain it, I sent it around to everybody again, a second time this afternoon late, so. Okay, um, yeah, Mary sent me the executed contract. So we have all that with the state, we're all set there. And then she sent me a model request for proposal, which all of you should receive, or should have received. And we need to fill in the blanks. Um, I mean, obviously towards the end, uh, the purchasing person, Julie, will fill in our requirements, the towns, but I need your assistance to fill in some of these things. So if you look at page one, they wanna know the name and title of a project coordinator. Now here's the issue. By the time this RFP is issued, because I have to send this back to the state, they've got approval of our RFP, then it's got to be sent out. And then by the time we ever start getting responses, um, they need someone who's going to be that project coordinator. Now, I could certainly probably designate Kathy um, as, as somebody, but we're, it'd be great if we had a backup person from you guys because Kathy isn't always going to be available to go out. My fear is if I put myself in there and I'm not here, that's, that could cause some issues. So I don't want to, I mean, look at Gary, when Gary switched to me, we had to go all the way back to council. I don't want to do that again. Well, I'm very comfortable with Kathy as the, um, as the contact person, because I think ultimately whatever becomes of the barn will become uh, um, under the umbrella of park, Parks and Rec. How about, a, um, do we have anybody that would like to be the, the local contact person? I'd be willing to be the backup on that if, if, if no one else wants to do it. And I would help you, Jim, if you needed it. So thank you, Jim. All right, so Jim will be the, the um, Keisha Farm um, Committee backup for that. Okay. And thank you. And Jim, that makes sense because you actually went to the meeting where the, um, the right. actual application I was zoomed discussed. to the meeting. Thank you very much for that. Now, if, you go, if you go to page two at the top, it says add in, add in any specific requirements, for example, area of study, themes, history that you want explored. So ladies and gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Uh, time to think about it, but we definitely want to do the uh, history of the of the Keisha family um, as it uh, relates to the dairy industry. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? And we are looking for a determination as to whether or not this structure is historically significant. Is that correct, Jim? I mean, you represent. I believe that. so. Yeah, to, okay. <clears throat> enough so that uh, <clears throat> so that it would qualify for the state historical register. <clears throat> so that is our area of study, Bonnie. We, okay. And you can take that wording right out of the um, the application. I kind of read it over, and that 
that is what we were asking for, a determination of the whether or not this structure is um, appropriately placed on the state his list of historic properties. Okay. All right. Cindy and Jim, did that actually get approved for? Uh, I yes, Dan. So it's officially been approved as historic? No, no, no. This is to decide if it's going to be historic. Okay, or not. okay. That's... Yes, we're worthy of, of uh, study to receive the grant to study it. Yeah, we already approved that though, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And then if you go if you go in the middle, it says uh, it asks really, do we want a public presentation to I would say probably the council or to you guys? I would think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And if so, um, I got to put it in the project timeline. All right, I'll back into that because I have to figure how long it's got to be advertised and all that. But the answer is yes. Okay. And then it's very hard to fill in the project timetable because I don't know how long it's going to take the state to approve it and get it back to us. And so I'll talk to Mary about that. I would think she has lots of experience with this and she could probably tell us how long it will. She, I, I think when you sent out the um, this RFP, there was also a little uh, note or email and it said she has a list of approved um, contractors. Yep. Contractors. So she probably would be able to tell us how long it takes to get it out to them and get it back. All right, um, Madam Chair, I think that's all I needed from you guys and we'll fill in all the rest. All right, that's great. All right, thank you so much. All right, number four, uh, subcommittee reports. All right, um, again, let me just start out with it and just thank you for all of the time and effort that went into the um, evaluation of the, the, what we were looking for in the subcommittee reports. Um, Jenna sent out a revised business plan, 26 pages. Thank you so much for how really? thorough and detailed yeah. you were with that. Yeah. And really, it just it will be a, of immense value to whoever follows us on, uh, you know, on this path. So, and then Mike, you and I spoke, and I know that your committee looked extensively at the issue of fields and did some research. And I thank you too for that. I mentioned to Bob. Correct. The only, we, we just didn't get a chance. What, what happened was last week we were, we were going to meet. And, um, we just, we, we couldn't connect obviously because uh, Dan was one of the, yeah. the key members there, but Dan's a little banged up right now, but uh, we'll have something together just to, to present. So I don't know if it'll be as extravagant as, as hers, but we'll have something. Well, no, that's, I think we can speak to that tonight and, you know, mm -hmm. what, what we are actually going to move forward with. Okay. But, the, but the report was incredibly thorough. And I yep. mentioned to Bonnie, it, the two reports had something that needed to be reconciled. The mm -hmm. initial report of the initial um, executive summary of the business plan had fields and farm together. And then I listened kind of carefully to the, to the meeting last month, and it was the recommendation of your committee, Mike, that the fields be under the um, umbrella of Parks and Rec, and that that's the best place to have them make decisions about them, to maintain them, and to make them part of the you know, recreational program. So if we can all agree with that, I think that that would, that would alter somewhat the business model, but I think it's in line what the subcommittee was reporting and supporting. Mike and Paul, and are you good with that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. okay. Paul, I didn't get a chance to, to, to talk to Paul about it or, or Dan, so. Yeah, we, um, if that's an agreement, I, I think that's what our recommendation was, that it falls under uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. All right. Makes a lot of sense. Now, one question we had, Cindy, was... Uh, we, we had asked Kathy to get a proposal for the cost associated with a, a single synthetic turf field. And, and while our proposal will likely include, um, you know, uh, bathrooms and, and uh, yeah, like maybe that. a concession stand and, and those types of things, um, we wanted to limit the initial scope to the basic requirements and it's ample parking, a synthetic field surrounded by a fence. And uh, we were wondering how relevant uh, the proposal that uh, Kathy provided 
would be in, in the broader discussion. Well, I'm gonna just throw that out to the whole committee then. I mean, um, is it our charge to go beyond recommending the need for a field that it be a synthetic field and that it have a fence and that if it's going to be under the parks and rec, then it therefore becomes their um, area of expertise and charge for the community. That's the question, I think. I mean, remember our scope here was somewhat narrow and defined and have we fulfilled our job in bringing that forward to the council in that form or Paul, do you and the rest of the, the members, do you see it as something you wanna make, um, be more specific about? Well, I just understand that, um cost tends to be a significant driver of decisions. And right. so. I think Let's so hear. you gotta have a, some kind of ballpark figure of cost to say, this is what we recommend. Uh, <clears throat> and we have that. Yeah, and, and uh, depending on where you cite the field and I'm optimistic that it could be sited south of the barn, behind the barn, adjacent to the school, present school parking lot, so that you wouldn't have to take another chunk of land and pave it to make a parking lot and spend all that money to do it if you could reuse the parking lot at the school or double book it. I don't know. I don't know if there's enough room there between... Um where Highcrest School, you're talking about in the back of Highcrest School where the field, excuse me, where the parking lot is, where it backs yeah. up Blueberry Hill and Cricket Knoll houses. Right, but there is, well, uh, and that's that's what the land use survey will tell us. Correct, absolutely, yes. And, uh, but we, Cindy and I did talk to a commercial uh, land use surveyor and briefly we had initial discussion and they said, they said, well, it looks like the parking, the uh, field could go back there. And we said, yeah, um, but that was just a discussion and off the top of their heads. Kind of. um, yeah, from our, our subcommittee perspective, we do not have a preference of location per se, as long as we have ample parking, it's the uh, least amount of disturbance to the neighborhood. Um, so it could be anywhere where the land survey uh, we, we are, I mean, Mike, I don't want to speak on behalf of the entire committee, but we don't really necessarily have a preference. We would want it just to be considered as part of the master plan. Yeah. Correct. In total agreement. Absolutely. How about the other members of the committee? Yeah, I was going to ask Mike and Paul, are you guys saying the parking would be by the school, but the field is going to be across the street? No, no. no Dan, there's, there's a piece of, there's, there's a section of land, and again, it, it has to get it has to get surveyed. But there's a section of land behind the actual barn. So what would happen is if if you were to put the field behind the barn per se, what would happen is you would use the Highcrest parking lot as your parking to, to park. Well, the, you mean be, you, you're thinking of putting the field behind the the dairy barn? That's what that's what this. Uh, what was the name of that place, that company? Oh, it was a Glastonbury. Um, I can't remember right now. Yeah, it was like CRC or something like that. But it was just, uh, they said off the top of their heads, this looks like it could happen. And we said, yeah. So, but that's, again, that's a survey, land survey issue. We, and, I need a land I, first. I we guess, can't, we can't determine it here. These are all possibilities. Nothing's correct. been decided. Yeah. Yeah, I the don't. advantage to that would be so great because you could combine a parking lot. Right. And and access off of. Uh, right. Off I, of, and, yeah. and I agree that I, I was always under the impression the field would go on the actual other side. Right. Uh, on that. And the and there was a parking. We were going to talk to us, Northeast Utilities, I think, has a right of way or something in there. Yeah. Where we had talked about that. Because my only concern about doing it behind, and I have no, I, I really don't have a preference on which side. I just want to see it. <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me where, wherever it makes the most sense. But I have a feeling people are going to get in an uproar about cutting down all those trees. If well, there's, there, there are the, there is the uh, nascent walnut tree grove, but otherwise there aren't that many trees back there. 
Okay. I don't think. <clears throat> Hi, yeah, it's Dan, Tara. the bottom line the oh. bottom line is this. We we we've talked about a few ideas of location, but without the proper planning, where is uh where are the trails going? Where is the farm going? Where is the field going? Where, you know, right. where is everything going? We don't right. have a preference. We just have the scope of fields and trails. Okay. Okay. And I think that that, Atara, I think you wanted to say something. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm sorry hi. I'm late. I, um, I, I, I know that there is a, a group of neighbors that live near that barn over there, and they are, you know, have been very clear that they don't want to see cars parked. So we're definitely going to have to work huh. that out where the parking is going to be. No, no again, I, until we get somebody, until we get somebody in there to really, you know, lay everything out, I think that will be difficult. You know, the aerial map shows a wonder, it really does show if you on that, that we got from uh, Jenna, you know, that wonderful aerial map, you can't see it, but you can see the relation to the parking lot to that space and the not that many trees, like Jim said, they're, they're bushes. But I don't know if that helps you see, Dan. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? I mean, I think Paul makes Paul and Mike are making a great point. They're recommending a synthetic field with a sensitivity to the neighbors and their concerns about parking, and that the mm -hmm. location of the, the the best location of that field will be determined by somebody who has the qualifications, and hopefully, it's the man that we're going to discuss, you know, tonight. Are we are we good with that, Mike? Does that and does that fairly say what you want yeah. to? And and I, absolutely. And, and you know what? To, to Jim, Mary, and everyone's point, until we get someone to tell us, you know, yeah, I, I get it. Where, where it ends up, or where it would end up, but Please. not not. In, you know what? In in Dan's defense, because anytime I've spoken with Dan about it, it's been across the street. Um, <laughs> and I get it because when. when you know, when we focus, we focus the fields across the street from Highcrest and the barn on the other side, you know, another project. So in, in fairness to that, then that, that, that's where that came from. And, and you're absolutely right, Mike. This was a, came out of the blue for us too. It was somebody who um, we had approached about possibly uh, giving us a quote so we could submit it with the grant for the survey. And right. they looked at it and said, if, if the school is town land and the park is, and the, the farm is town land, maybe this would be something that could satisfy yeah. both. Correct. Correct. You know, so this, this is a new idea that has, we ha would have to be verified by somebody doing an absolute study. Dan, I'd love to hear from you about including any type, type of cost estimates. Is that way above and beyond? If this is a parks and rec uh, field, it's part of their master plan for the town. Is it enough to go forward to the town council saying that we, the communities express the need for a field, we support a field, we would love to see it cited advantageously. Is that enough to go forward with? Well, I, I mean, I think, and, and Bonnie could probably add to this. I think there's gonna have to be some kind of dollar context associated with it. And, you know, if the request to the town is we need to have someone come in and now actually do the survey and all of that, um, then I assume we probably have to go out to bid on getting somebody to do all of that and, and, you know, do the due diligence for that part. I mean, I had envisioned us going to the council and, and approaching it from a perspective of the COVID funds as one way of helping finance this entire endeavor and so uh anything i think you give them ahead of time is you know the average cost of a field you know synthetic field based on our experience with catone is an example it's going to run you this and you know but in order to even get to that point we're going to have to hire a consultant to bring them on uh and or whatever it is a land surveyor or i don't know if the town can do it and um give us a true assessment of you know, where is it feasible? Where's the, where's the most feasible location? And maybe it is behind the barn or maybe it isn't. And that will probably have a, a cost impact as well. I would assume if it's on the side, on the other side and not behind the barn, there may be less leveling and less um, 
prepped for the field, but I could be completely wrong too. So, but does, I, I don't know. I feel like I may have answered 20 questions with that, but. Uh, <laughs> Good. No, I mean, maybe, maybe it's Parks and Rec that comes to you with the cost. We come with the recommendation. Yes. They are the experts. They come with the cost. Right. That's what I was going to yeah. say, because um, as you know, Dan, there are some council members who are not too fond of Keisha Farms, the yeah. whole concept. So if these guys came, um, if these guys came with, here's our recommendations, we've assigned the uh, field over to park and rec and have the, if, in case somebody asks, have the dollar amount in their back pocket, I think it'd be better for them. It's like two separate things. Yeah, and, and then just for everybody on, on the committee side, just, you know, this is gonna be a give and take. So, you know, going understanding that, that as much as we want all these things, there's probably either gonna be trade-offs or there's probably gonna be, we're gonna go slow here or what have you. But as long as we're moving forward, but I said, just, you know, go into that understanding that the wheels of, government churn very slowly and it's going to be a process and I think so just view every little win as you know it's a step forward but uh, I would be very surprised if I could I or anybody else could convince all nine council members that we should be doing all of these right away I would love to see that happen but I can tell you this I sell for a living but I ain't that good and so <laughs> this is going to take a long sales effort on that part. And I know there are some who are looking at, they still want to talk about the 55 and older community because that would bring tax revenue in and not really impact, you know, the school systems. And so there may be compromise somewhere in there. And I don't know, but I'm just saying that's the kind of conversations that are going to come up. And so I love the idea of coming to, Hey, this is what the community recommended. This is what people came back to. You guys did the due diligence with the surveys. Mm -hmm. Here were the top three things they asked for. We should meet the community's needs as requested and show a willingness to work with the council on, you know, we realize we won't get all of this, but we would like to make a good step forward. And maybe we start with this with the intention of a year down the road, we then go into this and that. And just, so just stuff to nibble at and chew on and just try to set expectations. I, can I just uh, comment on that? How can the council even consider I know you can't think for everyone, I'm just putting it out there, a 55 and older, you know, housing or whatever there, when it was voted on, that was not even in the language. So how is that even a conversation I, to be had? I, yeah, I honestly, that I don't know. I just know I've heard conversations on that. And we have one gentleman who loves to bring it up at every single council meeting. I know Cindy probably could tell you his address and where he lives and all of that, just from repetition of hearing it. And so, um, I know that I've heard other people talk about that and is there a way to do it? I don't know if there was anything in the actual wording. I mean, that's gonna be a legal review. So- uh, Well, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not an attorney, but it said municipalities, uh, recreational and open space. That's what people voted on. Am I incorrect, Cynthia? No, I the think- The only thing I, I it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mention uh, agriculture either. And I brought that up at the meeting when, when they were, finally you know, approving the uh, wording and the town uh, attorney said uh, agriculture is covered under other municipal uses. But I, th I think it's important to remember that the, what the committee did was what they were asked and that was to look at the possibilities, look at the, what the community wanted and there were several sessions, we've got lots of data and we saw both recommendations from the community, the top ones, which are nicely laid out in Jenna's report, and um, the biggest concerns, one of which at the very top is our costs. And so, right. you know, we've made some recommendations um, with regard to that non-for-profit, that structure, that business model that creates that, that solution around not having to um, worry about costs, but you know, we started up and we are able to maintain it and self-sustain. Um, so I just, mm -hmm. you know, we have to, we can't get ahead of ourselves, I think, with our authority on, I think it, I think we should recommend a field, absolutely. 
Um, but I just get worried that we've got to, to make sure that we stay within our bounds of what we know. We don't have a master plan yet. We don't have the land survey. So we stick to the recommendations and we stick to the biggest concerns um, that we've all considered as we were in our subcommittee meetings as well. The, the traffic, the parking, the costs, um, the neighborhood, et cetera, so. And then uh, Dan, one other point, and then we can look at the data again, but through all the listening sessions and the surveys uh, that were sent out, um, 55 plus housing did not make, you know, the top <laughs> spots. Uh, you know, you're, pre you're preaching to the choir, Paul, I'm just sharing because I don't yep. want you guys to be caught off guard because, I, you know, that's just something that I want everyone to be on the same page and I want to be as transparent as I can on that. And so in that sense, I just say that has been discussed. But again, and I don't know, Bonnie, if, is that even something legally they can do? If, because No, not if it's not mentioned in the bond language. Absolutely not. All right. Well, well then, you know what, then, then then that's great to know and you guys have that in your pocket but i just wanted to say is don't be surprised if that comes up and now at least we have an answer for it you know and definition by legal definition of the municipal uses you know an attorney could look at that differently than we've been looking at it right mm -hmm. so um for barry's notes and for for our edification here and moving forward because we want to talk about uh, the organizational structure too. So we are going to say that we are in, that the data shows that there is public support and a need for another field within the, the, um, the Weathersfield system. We support a field cited appropriately with a fence for now, and that um, we want to maintain constant vigilance about the neighbors and the parking because that was they that was clearly expressed to us cost neighbors parking is everybody yep. good with that going yep. forward yep yeah. just one other point a synthetic field and oh, I'm um, sorry okay and uh well i don't have um objective data to show this it does seem like maintenance is lower uh, for higher initial upfront costs lower maintenance over time um, and so one of the uh, complaints work that was commonly heard through the listening sessions is if we add more fields and we can't maintain the ones that we have, isn't that a problem? And, and one way to mitigate that is to make it a synthetic field. All right, great. All right, let's, let's move on now. Uh, okay. we're, uh, there's a dial in number 2717 that uh, we're getting some background noise if you wouldn't mind going on mute. Thank you. All right. So the second sub. There is also now background noise from a number ending in 1533 three, if you wouldn't mind going on mute. And I, I, there will be time for public comment. We'll, we'll make sure everybody has a chance to weigh in here. Thank you. All right, the second subcommittee report was the, um, the organizational basically piece of it. And the recommendation that we're going to make is that a 501c3 organization be established to carry forward both the um, possibility of a farm and agricultural production on the land as well as the trails. And so that's a, that's a, a, a change from the original um, intent. And I discussed this with Mike and um, I believe, Bonnie, I mentioned it to you too. Trails need to be maintained. They need to be cited. They need to be maintained. And, it, and the Holcomb Farm in Granby maintains their trails through their nonprofit. It doesn't make the town, it doesn't require the town to maintain them in any way. So the town would not be responsible for the trails on the Keisha property. And uh, I think that would be of a benefit to the community. Farms and field, the farms and trails seem to make sense. So if the committee is all right with that, we will make the nonprofit 501c3 corporation in charge of the, the trails and the agricultural potential there. And it can be friends of, of Keisha Farm. It can be incorporated as soon as possible, I, uh, you know, and then 
Um, those can be the small incremental things like Dan was talking about. If the friends wanted to have a concert in front of the barn this summer, I mean, we, you talk about it with Kathy, things like that. Little things could start to happen on the farm for the community with that. And then the Keisha Farm Committee, the one we're on, would no longer exist once the Friends was formed. Let's discuss that. We would, we would no longer fun, be a, an ad hoc manager's committee and then the 501c3 Keisha Farm, uh, you know, Friends of Keisha Farm would continue on with some of these ideas. What do you think of that? Well, that was the game plan, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was. That would be the recommendation. Yes, and Cindy, I'm in support of that. This is Paul. And then I also, uh, could be in support of uh, the Friends of Keisha Farm uh, being responsible for the maintenance on the trails. Mm -hmm. It does help mitigate the concern uh, that we heard from the town about our ability, uh, our ability to keep up with things. Um, you know, I don't, I, I guess Mike and, and Mary, we don't have Dan on, but what are your thoughts on that? I agree. Yeah, I think that would, that would definitely be a, a much better sell to the council, I would think. Yeah. Uh, I do ask it, but that that is only for the trails and the agricultural aspect. The field itself would be a parks and rec program, which technically right. would fall under the town and hopefully the youth sports help offset that cost. Correct. Uh, and I know Mike Orsini living across the street from it was willing to go out and do whatever you needed to do to maintain that field. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You know, we can get lights on it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I would tell you, you might as well go for it all now because down the road, they're going to be asking about the lights, I'm sure. So <laughs> should probably ask for it now and negotiate out. But uh, I think we have to think about the neighbors and the, Tara, I know you can speak to this around the concerns committee. We just have to do every decision. We have to consider the feedback that we got from the surveys um, that were loud and clear, so. All right, if everybody agrees with that, that would be the presentation that we would move forward with. Each committee, we would probably be better off doing just an executive summary and then giving all that data to them at, through Bonnie in a package that they could then look at stored on a, you know, in a file somewhere where people could constantly refer back to it, wherever the University of Hartford material is, you know, we could add to that as well. Mm -hmm. So it, is everybody comfortable with those two things? Those would be our two recommendations going forward. I agree. I agree. All right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But we, first thing we have to do is get that land survey authorized and, yep. and signed and uh, set in motion. Okay, so that's the next item on the agenda, the survey yeah. grant. So you heard you heard that Jim and I spoke with a Glastonbury firm that it, it didn't pan out at all. They wanted to do everything from listening sessions to you know a, 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 a gigantic kind of year long process. We were trying to just tell them we needed just the end of it. So Jim, you can explain to them how you found um, uh, Peter Minuti from UConn. We submitted an application to get six of the $10,000 cost reimbursed to the town. I don't know if we'll get it, but Jim will describe to you what we can get. And I think we have to decide whether we want to recommend the town do this regardless of whether we get the $6,000. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I think uh, Dan might have a comment about putting out the bid, but um, I learned about Peter Miniuti at UConn, who's uh, a professor in the uh, landscape architect department and he kind of offers this service. Um, and city, the town of Rocky Hill uh, obtained the services and uh, they started in December with visitations and they, uh, did, they did. So this Peter Miniuti employs undergrads and graduate students to uh, help this and his wife and they do their studies and so forth. Um, they made a preliminary uh, report, but it included a lot of history and not so much of the designs. And they expect to have a report with designs uh, later in March. Uh, so if we did postpone until April, then we would have that final report and, and see whether we really were satisfied with what they, the product they produced for Rocky Hill. Rocky Hill is the Straska farm 
<clears throat> they're doing a lot of, of uh, uh, agriculture because they have several farms that are leasing it, but they're gonna build a barn. They're gonna uh, have uh, community farms, uh, community uh, fields and uh, uh, build a barn for education purposes and stuff like that, which they have a grant for already. Um, <clears throat> and they're gonna have trails and so forth. So um, if, we, if we don't have to go out to bid, we could take their $10,000 offer and accept it and then move forward from there. Um, and it, but, Bonnie, have yeah, you seen just, the memorandum of understanding? Have you seen the MOU that I had to submit with the grant? I'm not sure. Why don't you send it, Jim? Did you get anything in writing from them, by the way? No, no, because we haven't really committed. We have to fill that. No, I know, but I'd be curious to see that because I've got to pass by your bidding question to finance. Okay, I uh, I will, uh, I'll send you whatever correspondence I have. Okay, uh, thank you. Because there might and, be a way to avoid it because it's UConn, but I got to make sure. It, Jim, yeah, just clarifying like a, something quickly. You mentioned if we deferred something until April, is that meeting with the town council? So or, we we had talked about not making our report tonight, but maybe making it the next meeting two weeks from tonight, or doing it on April seventh. Um, so, and then my only question would be before we make that decision. Um, Dan, if, if some of, uh, you know, there, there's a potential to use uh, some of the additional COVID relief funding for some of these projects, is, is there a, a lining up of the timeline of those decisions with uh, the content coming out of this group? Um, no, I think we're fine for time. Bonnie, I, I'd ask you on that. I mean, I know there's, you know, there's ten billion dollars worth of projects that people are asking to have funded. And That's we've right. Got, you know, X million available. Uh, yep. But what is, is like? What would the timeline be on that? I know everything's going to go through the council at some point. So. Yeah, um, I've already asked the mayor and Tom about how do you want to do this as a part of a regular meeting. I would recommend a special meeting. They said special meeting, but they have not set any dates. But I think part of it is we're going into budget. The town manager finalist interviews are the beginning of April and I have a feeling they're gonna postpone until that stuff is done. I mean, they have until 24 to allocate and 26 to spend. It's just my gut says there's too much going on right now. And it, it might make sense to have the new town manager weigh in and be a part of that as well, because at the end of the day, he or I she like is that. responsible for uh, making sure it happens and do, is done right. Um, so, yeah, so Paul, in that sense, is I think, you know, coming to the council in April with your report, I don't think that hurts us from a timing perspective. In fact, I think it gives you guys a little bit more time to get the information you need back from UConn and for us to find out whether we have to do a bid process or not, or if we can take advantage of the UConn offer. All right, that's, that's good news. The UConn timeline is six months. So if we can engage them as if, if it works out that we can engage them, we will know by the fall where they are where, where it would be best to cite the different things. And I think we should remember, there really weren't that many things that we're talking about. There's some moving pieces here, but not a lot. We wanted open space, we wanted trails, we wanted um, some agriculture. We hoped that the barn would be worthy of designation and maybe reconstruction. And then we, we wanted to see some kind of agriculture. You know, and the, so, I mean, we've got four or five parts. That was Yukon's great strength was they were gonna sit down and say, what do you want here? And then they were gonna cite it for us. Where should the community gardens be? Where should the walking trails be? What's the best area for farming and how to, how to best cite a field? So if, if it works, Bonnie, I think they are, um, they will provide us with the maps and the blueprint going forward. And I like that these are two different pieces now and they can go at their own pace. 
you know, these, these two different parts. All right. Any more on that? I think what we was, Cindy, Sorry, what was the, um, the $6,000? So it's a, it, the cost is $10,000 for this, um, this land use and siting survey. And the grant was for $10,000, but it's a 60, 40 match. So they will give us six and we must come up with four. So the cost to the community would be $4,000. And then they will allow us actually to work off part of that too. Yeah. So I put in the grant that individuals who were meeting with them could, could say that they were compensated for $1,000. So if we get the grant, it will be $3,000 cost to the town for, for UConn though, for UConn's proposal. And the, the, the town would need to front $5,000 in the beginning and then, and then probably pay the $10,000 before the grant come kicks in and reimburses us. So that's, you know, we, we have to, the town council has to commit to 10,000 and then hope we get the grant uh, reimbursement. <clears throat> And I, and I can tell you the argument they'll have right now is, well, let's get the grant first and then commit. Yeah. Well, we should know, not, I don't, I don't think it works that way. So, um, but I do think that I, Cindy, I thought the grant maybe uh, uh, would be, you'd find out in March sometime. I think we will. I think, I yeah. think. I think what Jim was trying to say is we'll probably still have to front a little bit of the money because the grant is paid at the end. Am I right, Bonnie? The grant money I comes. Think so yes, grant money comes in at the end of. Yeah, the it's a reimbursement, so you got to front it to begin with. Okay. But okay. if you're fronting it with the uh, COVID funds and then you get some back, that's all the better. <clears throat> okay, so now do we want to go to the town council on March 21st, or do we want to meet? You want to work on this and our subcommittees come up with our executive summaries, line up what we think we need. And Dan O'Connor, we'd love to hear from you what you really think should be in there and do it on April 4th instead. Bonnie, does April 4th work for the council? Um, I would assume. Okay. And this would be a short presentation. This isn't like the University of Hartford. I mean, we are coming forward with conclusions, really. Yep. April 4th or um, May 21st, what's your pleasure? Well, April 4th is when the proposed budget gets delivered to the council and is made available to the public. So I assume, I'm just wondering from an optics perspective, do we wanna come in when we're gonna be looking at a budget that like most will probably have an increase and then the first thing that comes after that is us asking for more money. You know, and just timing wise, would we be better off going before or would we be getting better off going at the second meeting in April? I mean, I, just, I, I'm just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the second meeting in April is the 18th or you're, or you're going back to the 21st. Mm -hmm. There's no other meeting, so. You know, I think sooner the better. We've been at this for a long time and I think we can. Yeah, I would say then we're probably best to do it in the next council meeting. Okay. Yeah, it's better to go before that budget's actually released because then at least when we get into the budget conversation, that can be something that's discussed as you know known beforehand as opposed to someone adding on afterwards. And it might be part of that, the, the funding that we're getting. It might be part of that discussion too, that yep. you could include it. Okay, so let's go with the 21st. And they're in person now, right? Yep. Yes, and First that time. would mean any backup that you guys want to provide to the council ahead of time, I need by the 16th. The, the kind of backup, Bonnie, you'd like to, the, maybe the memorandum of understanding from UConn, the yep. MOU, the executive summary from the two reports. Yep. And then if we're going to put anything up on the screen, uh, we need to give you a little heads up as to what that might be. Yep. Okay. That's correct. Okay, good. All right, that's, I think we can do that. All right, so the status of our committee, if the council accepts our recommendations and if they, um, they acknowledge that Parks and Rec is gonna deal with the field and that the other activities on the farm will be managed by a 501c3, then we could recommend that upon the formation of that 501c3 that our 
committee, I don't know, disbands basically. That And that, you know, a, a call goes out to people in the community to come and staff this new committee with some different goals. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, it's kind of gulp, but yes, that's the way it has to go. I mean, I think that was the intention. I think as Mary reminded sure. us, we had a we had a narrow kind of scope to, to assess public opinion as to what people wanted to do with this. I feel comfortable we did that, that we fulfilled our, our mm -hmm. charge. And I, I wanna present it to the council. So when people say to me, what's going on with that? We can say, well, this is what's going on. You know, we're, we're moving forward on two different fronts. Mike? Cindy, the, the, the only thing to that is, is and, and I'm in total agreement, is when we step down as a committee, who takes like, how do I want to say it? Uh, the changing of the guard there. Like how, how does, how would that, like someone steps up, who, who would do it? Like, like how, how's that per, how is that person or that group founded? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just saying, because the only reason why I'm saying this is this, and I get it, it's time, it's time. I, I, I'm in total agreement. But when, it, you know, we've put so much time and effort into this, when we, when we do the pass off, how does that, how is, how are we envisioning that pass off? Uh, we, we've got to, we've got to legally have a 501c3. And then we've got, somebody's got to pick the, the board of directors. Uh, and that's the board of directors would be who we pass it on to, but they'd have to exist. Correct, but do, before, no, and, yeah. and, and I understand that, Jim. And, and, yeah. and, and I guess that is my question. My question is, do we have anyone that we're passing this on to of, as of yet? No. Okay. Not that I know. No. Okay. And who is okay. responsible for making that call, the town, right? Making the call out to the town and community? No. No, once it's a non well, someone has to. Yeah, who's going to do it? Uh, so, we would, I think we would, in, we would initiate that. We would say the next okay. step here in the process is to involve all of you people who've been following our social media, who've been you know, excited about the possibility. Now it's time for new, young, engaged people to step forward and, and take ownership of this. So I think that should be part of our process as we're leaving. Yes. Right, that we would, that we would call out these people and then somehow they would be selected. Or we'd sign them who, up or whatever. No, and who and decides the board, Cindy? Who yeah, decides. Non, sorry, yeah, and a nonprofit. No one's selected. Every single person in the community of Weathersfield is eligible to join a nonprofit. If they want a leadership position, if they want to join the board, then they can put their names forward, and there's a vote, just like everything amongst the people that are okay. there. And um, the Masaro Farm, I think Jenna did it have eighteen. Directors, board of direct, the board of directors, I think was 18 people. Yeah. And so it's kind of divided up. You're divided into trails. You, there's models all over for it. But I think there are people in the community that are, are ready. There might be people on this committee that want to stay involved. And, you know, Mike and Paul, I would hope that you would shepherd and, and Mary shepherd the whole idea of a field on the farm through the process that it's going to face, uh, you know, before Parks and Rec, and then the council. I mean, you'll be advocates for that, I hope, right to the very end of the process. Yep. Right, right? <laughs> yes, yep. yes. Yeah, yeah, no, so I, are I, you? I know what you're saying, but like, like you and I have discussed, there's going to be a crossover. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, again, we've come, like I said, as, as all of us together, we've come too far, um, but it's just a point of, of, of that, that changeover. Um, so we would continue yeah. until the 501c3 was established. And then that new group would would move forward with this. Okay. And, and they might call on people to give their some continuity or something. I mean, you can you can see what happens. We can see what happens. Who comes? Okay. That's fair enough. All right. And the town would still be involved because some of these grants that the five hundred one C three agriculture entity would want to apply for. Nonprofits can't apply for until they've been in existence for three years. So the town would have to uh, underwrite that, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but we've kind of, I've kind of run this by Bonnie a few times. I've been trying to envision it too. And there would always be, I mean, this is town property. So if you want to use it, you go through parks and rec. I mean, you want, you want something to happen there. Um, 
I mean, it, it, it would function just like Mill Woods. It would function like Solomon Wells. I mean, it would be, it would just be one more um, organization within the community that would be under Is the- Is there an organization at Mill Woods? Well, no, but let's say you wanted to use Mill Woods. You would go to Parks and Rec and you would right. apply to use it. Just like- But the nonprofit would already be kind of in charge of what, what's happening on the field around the agriculture part. But right. it would be a partnership with the barn, how, how they might, might want to use it. I was looking at the nonprofits that have barns, and it, I think it would function just like Solomon Wells. They're tremendous rental in, income producing properties. You know, it could be a major part of, it could be, there could be a real symbiotic relationship between the farm and the field that's on the farm. I mean, that's all TBD, but it does work for the people that have these um places where people can hold events. All right, so our next meeting will be April 4th, but we'll be in person, okay? I don't think we can get everything organized um, in time to, to try. I did put a call into Dan Silver, uh, not Dan, oh, Brian Silver, to see if he would be willing to file the paperwork for us. So, so didn't, didn't we just <laughs> conclude to, do, to make our presentation in March? March before that, April 4th? March 21st. <laughs> We'll make our presentation and April 4th, we'll have a meeting because I don't think we'll right. have- Right, okay, no, I got you, okay. By then, okay. Yeah. Cindy, can I back up a minute? I just wanna make sure I understand. What are the outcomes you want from the council March 31st? Is it just listening or do you really want them to vote on something? March 21st. 21st. Yep. Yeah. You know, Dan, jump in here, but I don't think there's anything to vote on. I mean, if I think, I think the field will become part of the whole equation for Parks and Rec, and, okay. and, and they will determine how it fits in with their needs. Um, the survey is what we need the part, the town council to vote on. Right, we, that's that's a uh, right. Okay, that's the thing that I mean. That's the yeah. thing that costs money, and we don't have it yet. There is a potential that we'll have the grant, but even without it, there there would right. be some, there would be some expense to that grant, regardless. I, and I, I, yeah, sorry. I, say, I, I think the survey is a no-brainer. It's got to be done. So, right. regardless. So, I mean, I, I mean, there could be disagreement on it, but I think the majority of people go along and say, you know, we already bought this field. We might as well do the right thing now and figure out where we're going to put stuff if we're going to do that. So, I, I, I don't see anything with that. And then, um. I think there's still going to be a lot of discussions on how COLA funds can be allocated and all of that. And so my fear about parks and rec is I don't want to see that field get lost in the parks and rec quagmire sometimes in there. And so that I do worry about, but it also makes sense. It falls under parks and rec. So. Yeah, I guess in, when, when we talked, or at least my interpretation of when we talked about parks and rec was, we would make the recommendation. We would get to a point where we had agreement, a field was something we wanted to do, and then it would be turned over to Parks and Rec for execution, not necessarily turned over to Parks and Rec for them to go through the approval process and to be you know, fighting for capital <laughs> dollars within their program, so on and so forth. Yeah, that, that, Paul, that, that was my concern about that. So it may be, and and fine, we can talk about this too. And what how best to do that? Do we basically do the due diligence up front and then just hand it to them to run, as opposed to giving it to them so they can put it with a line item of you know the Mill Woods master plan and all these other things that it may just get buried. All right, yeah, we'll talk about it, Dan. Yeah. Did any put did everyone get a chance to read? Jenna's the business plan. I mean, to Mike's point, this is a wonderful, I think, pass off tool to a historical perspective of what we've done and where we've come to based on University of Hartford and everybody's involvement. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. Really great work. Really great work. And, and will the town council have a copy of this or are we agreeing to do this or? Um, usually what I would recommend is you give them the full report, but that summary is going to be key 
because people are so busy, they can't necessarily read the entire report, but they'll read the summary. How about the whole packet with a summary attached so they can always go back and reference? No, that's fine. And I'll, I'll put that together for you guys. Do you agree, Sandy? Absolutely. I think I each, mean, each committee Jenna, should have an executive summary. And then, yeah. well, I, but I think, uh, but also I think Jenna's report encompasses the fields as well. Am I wrong? I think we've got that all in there and whatever supplemental information we need, but do we really need, to, we don't need two separate reports. Well, I guess what, but if I understand, it's too much for them to sit down and read this whole packet. No, I know, but I mean, we're not going to do a separate field one, I guess. That's what I'm asking. But the wording has to, she has to change the wording because I think in the, when she would put it together, we were kind of thinking of having a, a 501c3 that did agriculture and right uh, fields and we that that's got to be fixed so that right. it's clear wh where the fields are going to and park and rec and parks and, and i'll help yeah. you and the trails too are moving over a little bit and i'll help you with that okay all right i just so, think it gives a nice overview of everything and how it's it solved. does it's wonderful mm -hmm. jenna you did a great job thank you pam <laughs> all right bonnie did we get any correspondence not that i'm aware of Okay, I didn't either. And uh, I know we have some people on the call. Is there anyone who'd like to make a public comment? We'd love to hear from you. Do you have, do they have to do anything, Bonnie? They might have to do star six. Okay, well then hearing no one, um, is there anything else that, that people feel that we need to, to bring up and discuss? Everybody feel kind of clear on where we're going, how we're gonna present this and comfortable yeah. with the direction? Yeah, can you review dates again? Yes, we are hopefully going to be, um, no, we are going to be at the town council March 21st. And I will work with Jenna and then we will circulate an executive summary that that gives the everything that we've said tonight, you know, put it cohesively together with some of the changes mm -hmm. that we made. The only mm -hmm. thing we'll ask the town council for that night is to um, to approve the the uh, grant for the survey. And I think we can make a strong case for why we need it. <laughs> We're at that point now where we need to know where are the trails, where's the farm, where are the community gardens. Where's the open space? Where's the field? The field. Oh, okay. And then, uh, then we will meet again on April 4th to kind of give a status update on have we made any progress organizing the 501c3 and any other things that come before us. Will we know about the barn by then? I, I don't think I, so. I, in what way? Will we know if it is granted a historical no. Oh, God, no, no way. <laughs> it's going to take a long time just to get the consultant on board because of the RFP. Uh, you got to advertise that usually like a month. Okay. And Jim, that's another reason why you want to be on the 501c3 because you're that contact person for the barn. Right. So you want yeah, to stay a, you know, active in that organization. That's an aspect of the, of the whole thing. And then the agriculture, that's going to be, going to be fun. I, no one would be better than you on that, Jim. No one. All right. Cindy, I do have a question. Yes. So um, for the for the council meeting on the 21st, are we presenting it as one or like, so does my committee have to submit something to someone to read off or how, how are we doing that? What do you think, Bonnie? What's the best way? Why don't you do both? And then I'll take a look and um, see which way. And Dan and I can talk and we'll figure out the best way to do this. But yeah, I still think you better. So I would need that by the 16th. Okay. So maybe Mike, maybe yeah. Mike. Just... I'm just looking at dates, go ahead. Okay, so maybe Mike just uh, be available to discuss if there's any questions from the council. So if someone has questions on, the field, et cetera. Maybe that would be a question for you and Paul and Dan and Mary or okay. someone on the organization. Yeah. We'd be available for questions. Okay. okay. All right, that's fair enough. What okay. time is the town council meeting? Seven. Thank you. Will we be at the beginning or we won't, you won't? You won't. Um, 
if you need a vote, then you won't, because originally I was thinking you'd go first in presentation, but if you need them to vote, that won't happen. Okay. So um, it's hard to say until I firm up the agenda, but I'll put you up as early as I can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if there's nothing from the, um, the Department of Agriculture about the grant, is there anything to vote on other than just a recommendation that we need this? No, I think they have to vote to pay for it, regardless of whether we get the grant or not. Okay. Yeah, uh, do that. And if it ends up something happens and you don't get it, it's not a big deal, but at least it's done and over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I did say to Bonnie, the more we can do while she's here, since she has shepherded us, shepherded mm -hmm. us through this whole process, I would Amen. love this to be, yeah, to be concluded while you're here. Thank you for all your attention. Yep, no problem. Really. really. All right, Bonnie, guys. You, you live in town, you moved back here a little bit? Uh, I no, I live in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, I thought she rented a... I did. You I did. You can take the Bonnie out of Weathersfield, but you can't take the Weathersfield out of Bonnie. <laughs> right. Happy to have you. All right, motion to adjourn. Yes. So I Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank Bye. you. Great Bye. job. Bye.